Today I'm gonna to show you how I'm beefing up my front axles by swapping them out for remanufactured Toyota versions with high angle inner boots. Coming up. My name is Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel, we help overlanders out for themselves for adventure through doing gear reviews, vehicle mod tutorials, and cooking tasty camp meals to share by the fire. A while ago on a trip, I was doing some pretty extreme rock sections for really what this thing's built for. And at full extension and full lock of my suspension, my left CV was clicking like crazy. And the only other vehicle I've ever had that had a CV CV go out was a Honda Civic and you know the sound of a CV that is going out. Now granted this was in a pretty extreme situation and a pretty extreme angle so I let it ride for quite a while because the axles I wanted to buy were an investment for sure but I ordered them up they've been sitting in my garage for far too long and I need to get them installed. So what I got for you today are some remanufactured axles from CVJ. So what we have here is a completely remanufactured either Lexus or Toyota axle from a company called CVJ. CVJ and they rebuild these things and beef them up. On this side, you have your standard black outer CV boot. And on this side, you have an aftermarket high angle CV boot that is wider, longer, and has more ribs in it, allowing for more articulation. Currently on their website, you're looking at 308 bucks per side, $616 for a set. You have to pay for shipping, tax, all that kind of stuff. And then they have an $85 core charge per side, meaning you gotta send back your old axles to them so they can rebuild them and send them out just like this guy. Now the reality for me is I'm actually gonna keep my old axles and rebuild them. And once I rebuild them, I might actually keep one of them in the vehicle as a spare for the trail, depending on if I can justify the weight or not. We'll see, either way, I wanna learn how to rebuild an axle because I've never done it. Really looking forward to getting these in. First things first though, I gotta get the old ones out. So I'm gonna block the back tires, break the lug nuts loose, jack the thing up, put it on jack stands and work on getting the old one out. First, I removed the 21 millimeter lug nuts using my Milwaukee 3 8 stubby impact gun. This is part of their M12 line I've become very fond of. Gave the tire a couple of good whacks while rotating it to break it loose. And then I always locate it under the front skid plate just for a little extra fall security. I have wheel spacers, so I needed to remove those. I stopped the axle from spinning by jamming a screwdriver in the inner fins of the rotor and pinning it against the caliper. This stops everything from spinning so you can break the nuts loose. My axle nut cap was giving me a heck of a time, so I actually ended up sharpening down this screwdriver that I had to be able to get in between and form a little bit of a gap. Once I did that, I slowly worked my way around freeing it up and prying it away. From there, I straightened out the ends of the cotter pin and then to get a little extra purchase, I grabbed the top of it with a pair of diagonal cutters and hammered it out backwards. I removed the little castle nut locking washer. I used my 36 millimeter axle nut socket with a breaker bar, uh, utilized the screwdriver technique in the caliper rotor there to stop everything from spinning and broke the nut loose pretty easily. I didn't want to remove the entire brake assembly so I lashed it safely up and out of the way making sure I didn't damage any of the brake lines or ABS sensor. From there, I got to work on the four 17 millimeter bolts holding the lower ball joint to the steering knuckle and uh, threw an extension on my short stubby Milwaukee impact to speed that process up and get me a little bit more clearance for taking those bolts out. Took the axle nut the rest of the way off, pounded it around, tried to wiggle it around and loosen it up a little bit, but it wasn't breaking free. So in this case, I actually uh, took some of the pressure off of the system by jacking it up slightly with a chunk of wood so I didn't damage the rotor. And that took enough tension off the system to allow it to release from the axle. With just a little bit of tapping on the outer axle to uh, get that final release. Now there's a little retention clip on the inside of the axle that is holding it kind of into the differential and you can either get behind it and hammer it out or pry it out. I found it easiest to pry it out. From there I just pulled it until the retention clip released and fed it out between the control arms and the strut. I should have used a oil catch pan. I had some diff fluid dripping out and uh, got on my floor, but that's okay. I decided to not swap out the diff 
seals and just use the existing ones. That kind of bit me in the butt because I have some weeping around it after the fact and I'm going to have to go through and change that out eventually again. But I guess I'll just get really good at doing axles. I had a little bit of trouble sending it through the front opposite of how I pulled it out so I chose to go through the back and after a little bit of work I was able to feed it through the space there. Line it up with the gears inside the diff, give it a little whack with my dead blow hammer and you can see it seat right there. Then it's just reversing the process and starting to put everything together again. Getting the knuckle and the lower ball joint to line up perfectly was a little challenging, but I utilized my jack to take a little of the tension off again, lined up one of the bolts, and once I got one of the bolts kind of lined up, I was able to get everything kind of realigned correctly so I could remove the jack and start feeding in the rest of the bolts. Once I had all the bolts down, I uh, put on the axle nut and snugged it down with my stubby impact just a little bit and then I took out the old service repair manual and looked up the torque specs. I believe the four bolts for the lower control arm were 59 foot pounds and the axle nut was 173 foot pounds. I utilized that whole um, screwdriver trick against the brake caliper there to make sure I could get some tension on it. Put the locking castle nut back in fed the existing pin, cotter pin back in and bent that around so there's no chance of it working itself loose. And then reset the axle nut cap and hammered it in with the dead bow hammer making sure I wasn't damaging any of the edges. Like I said, I have wheel spacers so you probably won't have to do this step if you don't have them, but basically just reattach that the same way. I utilize the high speed ratchet from Milwaukee that I love so much, it just speeds up every job I do, man. Uh, torque all of them down to their proper specs and then grab the wheel to put it back on. Now one thing I do to put on wheels just because they're so heavy is I kind of line them up and then I pin them between my feet and slowly work them kind of higher using my calf muscles for the most part to lift them into place onto the wheel studs. Got all my lug nuts back on the tire. Jacked it up to remove the jack stands and the jack, get it back down its own weight. Torque those lug nuts down to where they need to be and I'm pretty well done with one side of the job. I did record me doing the whole other side all the way through just to see how long it would take me to perform the procedure without having to worry about stopping and repositioning the camera and all that kind of stuff. And it ended up taking me about 57 minutes. So that's pretty much the time that I took to do one side of the job. After finishing this up, I did take the truck out and run it through all its paces and didn't notice anything better or worse, but I am happy to finally have these things installed. They look great and uh, I'm looking forward to having a little bit more durability with my axles in the future. If you like this video about upgrading the components of your vehicle, definitely check out this one. Have a good day.